My name is Otejire Jumabone. I'm the creative director of Hank and Rich Leather Goods. Um, so today we'll be having a class on um, hand stitching leather goods to perfection. Um, for the purpose of this class, we'll be focusing on small leather goods, and um, which are easy to make. Uh, so we'll be making key holders today. We're making a key holder. We have some samples that are already made here, um, just to give you a sense of what it's like when it's finished. Um, and then we have our materials. So first thing is, we get the measurement for, so we have the dimensions here, as you can see. We're cutting at a length of 10 inches by 0.825 inches. Now, um, the good thing is I have, you know, the divider here, so it makes it very easy for me because what I can do with the divider is just mark my 0.825 inches on this, get the right dimension here. And I have that. And then I can easily just mark it along this stretch all the way to the end. What this does for me is it gives me a guide, a guideline on where I'm going to be cutting, you know. So already I have that guideline. Um, when I started out making leather goods, one of the challenges I had was, you know, it takes a while for you to learn to get a steady hand, especially when you're working with thicker leather. But one of the things that helps a great deal to make, to allow for you to make a perfect cut is using this um, mat you have here. It's called the self-healing mat. And so why it helps is the moment you put your knife in there, your knife sinks in and it's steady enough so it doesn't allow for any sort of you know funny movements and allows you to cut in the wrong direction. But that also you know doesn't guarantee that you won't make mistakes. You have to be really you know steady with your hand when you're you're making the cut and I'll try as much as possible to do that here. And so what we want to do is cut across now, most people would tell you that um, when you make leather goods, especially by hand, um, you measure twice or three times and you cut once. I, I tend to agree with that, but then you know what I realized over time is sometimes when you're working with leather that is really thick, um, and also if you're cutting in a straight line, you can, you know, um, if you know what you're doing, you can cut more than once. And so that doesn't you know, put you under so much to rest. You don't have to apply too much pressure, which sometimes might lead to you making mistakes, you know. So I'm going to run through this a couple of times, just so that I'm not under any duress. Yeah. What we do next is we measure 10 across, 10 inches across. One of the things that helps you um, when you're measuring things and making marks is the scratch or it is, it is such an indispensable tool. It's so small, but it's such an indispensable tool when you're hand making leather goods because, you know, um, it helps you to make markings that guide you really, you know. So take for example, um, we want to do 10 inches here. And so we mark right here. What that does for us is it allows us to know exactly where to cut. One of the reasons why I can't work without this, I literally cannot work without it because, you know, this is, is it's obvious here. We have a straight line and we want to cut at 90 degrees. What that does for you, what the steel square does for you is it makes it really easy. So what you do is you place it across the length and already you can see that you have a perfect 90 degree angle to cut from, which makes your work very, very easy, you know, and it makes you certain that you're not making any mistakes at all. So that's a beautiful thing. So we have this at 10. We're burnishing the, we're burnishing the edge of the leather so that, you know, it gives it a smooth and um, professional finish. And when you're working with vegetable tanned leather, um, one of the ways you can burnish leather in the event that you don't have an edge coat, you know, um, 
is to use wax, um, beeswax. You know, um, so you apply beeswax, you put a little bit of water, just like I'm doing here, and, and then you burnish, and it gives you a smooth edge. And so, as you can see, I have a smooth finish. So if you compare that, to, if you compare these two edges, you see that one is smoother than the other. And so now that we have the burnish edge, the next thing we go on to is punching the holes so that we can go ahead and stitch. And so carefully punch, pull it out. Yeah, so you have the holes punched. You see, the holes punched. So, now we have this. The next thing is we need to stitch down so that we stitch this in place. We stitch the snap hook in place, just like you have here. So, um, uh, for stitching, um, some people are able to stitch, you know, by hand. But one of the things that makes your stitching of leather good really easy is this tool here it's called a stitching pony so what it does is it helps you to hold your leather item in place while you're stitching with both hands because both of your hands are engaged and you need something to be able to hold your leather item in place while you're stitching this stitching pony um, was made locally uh, I got a carpenter here to make it for me um, you have a wide variety of um, stitching pony brands, you know, that you can buy from around the world, but you know, I find that we have a lot of wood in Nigeria, and so you know, we should be able to make most of these things ourselves. So, I'll go ahead and set up. It's important to get it because It's important that when you're stitching with um, thread, um, you realize over time that you don't want to, most times you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you don't have enough length of thread, you know, and I, I from experience, I realized that um, when you're stitching a particular length, say if you're stitching about um, 10 inches, it's always best to have about 40 inches of thread, that's four times the length you know, of thread, which will be enough because trust me, as you stitch, it takes up a lot of thread. So 10 inches is able to take up somewhere between 35 and 40 inches of thread. You know? And so for this purpose, what we're stitching is really small. I mean, what we're stitching here is, is just one inch, but then we can't, we can't make four inches because we have to take into consideration the length of these needles, which, you know, approximately each of them is about three, inch, um, three inches. So what we're going to do is we'll take it as long as about 16 inches, just so we're safe. It might be more, but you know, I always like to be safe. And yeah, yeah, we have, have our scissors. Cut. Yeah, that's it. So we're going to be making, we're going to be making, um, three stitches and that's why I always like to have um, cutting boards that have some sort of dimension on them because it makes your job really easy this is pre wax thread but then you know sometimes if you're using wax thread or if you get thread that is not wax you should try to wax it before you begin to use that one of the things you use to wax is bees wax this is easily found anywhere locally you know, anywhere it could be found, you know. Um, and so, simply, a simple way to do it is just run the thread through the beeswax, just like this. That way, you see that the thread, the wax is entering into the thread fibers. 
And as you see, you see that it's taut. So it's because you have wax in there, it's already strengthened. Yeah. And so the next thing is after waxing the thread, we put the needles, the threads in the needles. And then we're ready to stitch. Alright, so we're starting the stitching. So for this one, as you can see here, we're going to be doing a double loop over the edge. Now what a double loop does is it gives it, it makes it more taut, it gives it strength, you know, so that there's not no opening when you're using it. So we're going to double loop over the edge. So what you want to ensure is that both threads are the same length, as you can see, they're the same length. It's important that when you're sewing, both of them are the same length, because if one is shorter than, than the other, you find that as you stitch, you have more on one side, and in most cases, you're not going to be able to complete your stitch perfectly, you know? So you want to ensure that at all times, they're both the same length. And so the process of stitching is, you know, um, you develop a style, but one of the key things you want to understand when you're stitching is that there should be consistency. If not, you would never get a stitch that looks professional, a perfect looking stitch. Consistency is important. And so you have your left hand, you have your left hand, you have your right hand. Depending on what works for you, I like to start with the left hand, go in, come out and then come back in with the right hand and continue the same way until the end. So you watch this carefully. You go in with the left hand first and then you follow in with the right hand. You have the first stitch. Repeat the process, go in with the left hand And follow with the right hand. So this actually depends on what works for you. Some people like to start with the right hand first, but I always like to start with the left hand first. So it's the same. You go in with the left hand. Now we're now at the end of this stitch because this stitch has. Um, this stitch line has just about four holes and four holes across the length gives you only three stitches but when you get to the end we can't stop here so we back stitch what that does for you is it gives your stitch strength so that you don't want to make a stitch that opens up after you've done that so we're going to back stitch you know so for the purpose of back stitching what i like to do is I follow the same way, go in with the left and then come back with the right. And then one more time. So back stitch twice to give it enough strength. And then we can open it up. Now what that does for you is that it shows you the first side, the stitching on the first side. So we're done with this. Now what we need to do, pretty easy, we just cut on this side. Not too close but not too far. You see how small that is? And the next thing we do is, since this is polyester thread, what we want to do is we just burn it. Now what this does is, is, is it creates, you know, balls and these balls create a stop because they don't, you know, they're big enough that they don't go back through the holes that you stitch them in. So the next thing we do is we put in the loop, just like you have here, we stitch in the loop, stitch it in and create our punch and we have it. 
So that's it guys. Remember for you to get a perfect stitch, you need your dimensions, you need your templates, you need your straight lines, and most importantly, you need your stitching pony. My name is Otejiri Juma Bonen from Hakan Rich Leather Goods.